the number one mistake that writers make is writing the first thing that comes to mind. This can ruin all aspects of your writing, from setting to sentence. If you want to write a horror story about slowly freezing to death and being trapped and isolated as your body starts to shut down, then you might think to set your story in a mountain cabin during a snowstorm. But what if you reject this initial thought and decide instead to set your story in a meat locker? Have you ever worked in a kitchen with a walk-in freezer? I don't know about you, but that's just about the scariest place I can imagine. I used to try to dart in and grab whatever I needed so fast before the door could swing shut behind me in case I got stuck or someone locked me in and I slowly froze to death amid the shredded potatoes. Now you have a more unique setting. When you're writing, it's important to remind yourself that the first thing you think of is likely the first thing that everyone else thinks of. It could even be a cliché. At the very least, you're setting your story up to have to compete with all of the other stories set in a mountain cabin, and there's probably twice as many of those as there are stories set in meat lockers. But maybe you've already seen your fair share of meat locker thrillers. So you go one step further and set your story in a cryogenics lab, surrounded by frozen brains with an evil doctor who licenses those. Always remember to think one step further than your original thought. It will help you in all aspects of your writing. So write that down on a little post-it note and stick it by your desk so you don't forget. You could do this type of thinking during revision, but a lot of writers don't since it ends up requiring a massive rewrite. It's best done during the brainstorming phase. But remember, it's not just for setting. Let's say you've chosen to set your story in a meat locker, and now you need to find the next plot point that will increase the tension in your novel. You could give your character an injury that requires immediate medical care. For example, they think they know how to fiddle with the mechanics of the meat locker and force the door open, but they accidentally puncture a Freon tube, so now there's Freon spraying ice crystals all over the room. And your character's survival time has drastically decreased. That might sound okay right now, but try to think of it from your reader's perspective. I bet if you were reading a story where the character got locked in a meat locker and then started fiddling with the door mechanics, the first thing you think would be, oh, I bet he messes it up and starts spraying that freezing agent everywhere. Oh, look. I was right. And then they're bored. So what if, instead of an injury, you make your character just about to finish their shift, right when they get locked in the meat locker? So they've already changed out of their uniform of long pants, a button down, and an apron, so they're wearing a summery dress or gym shorts. Now they don't even need an injury, but they're freezing ten times faster. If you're not too heavy-handed with the introduction of the meat locker, your audience might not immediately think that the character will get locked in as soon as they change their clothes. This technique also works on the line level. Let's say, during your first draft, you just wrote loosey-goosey and let whatever words spill out onto the page that you could. That's fine. That's what first drafts are for, but when you go back in revision, while you're checking for all the things you normally check for during revision, you also need to scrutinize each sentence and think, was this just the first thing that came to my mind? That's where cliches come from. The easiest way to avoid cliches is to never write the first thing that you think. So let's say you're editing your meat locker story and you come to the introductory description of your antagonist the person who will end up locking your protagonist in the meat locker. Maybe you were trying to do a little foreshadowing during this description, so you describe him as having a glare that is as cold as ice. Classic. Eh, it's also a cliché. You might like it in this story, because this story culminates in ice, but it's still a cliché. And you know that because it was the first thing that came to your mind. So now, in revision, you change the sentence to He had the unyielding glare of a waitress when a ten-person group comes in two minutes before closing. Original. You could try to stick with the cold theme in that description, but I couldn't come up with another cold metaphor, alright? Cold as ice, that's all I've got. When he glared, he had the cold, vaucous look of a prehistoric man, exhumed from a glacier after a thousand years of rest. Writing the first thing you think will creep into every aspect of your writing if you are not careful. Backstory, description, dialogue, you name it. Man, you need to stop. Stretch that brain a little. 